What up? Coming to you live from a very, very special car. A car that I've been dying to drive for over a year. A car that I've only seen a handful of times. And from the looks of it, it looks like it could be a Subaru Sandbar, but I'm actually in a Subaru Domingo. So this is a 1997 Subaru Domingo, and it's basically a seven-seater K-Van. It isn't a K-Car technically because it's much bigger. It has bumpers, which K-Vans do not have. The motor is literally twice the size. It's a 1200cc. It's a seven-seater, and this could be maybe the perfect JDM micro van for me. I love K-Vans. They're my favorite type of K-Vehicle. I think the trucks are awesome, but they're two-seaters, and I really have no use for the bed when it comes to k cars i feel like the driving experience isn't really something new if i bought a b it's kind of like buying a miata if i buy a vivio like this it's kind of like buying an eg or a golf it isn't something new it's kind of just like having a right hand drive car even the jimny as much as i love this car it's really just a right hand drive sandbar in comparison to these two where i feel like personally the real k car experience is when you're sitting on top of the wheels so with that being said as much as i love k vans they have one huge flaw that i learned after buying my first K-Van, they're slow. And yes, we know every K car is slow, but when I bought this, I feel like most people think the same way. I thought this would be the perfect road trip vehicle. You could turn it into a camper. You have a lot of space back there. You can put the seats all the way down. This kind of turns into a bed when you put this one flat. And I just thought with all this room, this has to be the perfect camper. Not only is it shaped like a bread box, so it's not very aerodynamic either, but it's just too slow. That's when I found out about the Domingo, and that's why I piqued my interest so much, because it's basically the same size as a K-Van, just with double the motor. So in today's video, we're gonna go over the Domingo. We're definitely gonna drive it on the highway, and let's see, by the end of this video, is this gonna be the perfect JDM little micro van? Or, although it is a 1200cc, it is still a three-cylinder car, so maybe it might not make a big difference. So this is a 1997 Subaru Domingo GV. I wanted to park it next to a K-Van, just so you can see there really isn't much much differences like I said all this really has is a bumper which eliminates it from being a K car seeing how it's too big along with the motor but when it comes to the interior they're pretty much exactly the same this guy doesn't have any fancy door card but look at the cluster look at everything else look at the dash all this is pretty much exactly the same when it comes to the Domingo not a lot of differences this one also has a really cool cup holders but besides that, besides the fact that this has some nice armrests, there isn't many differences between these two cars. So the Domingos have a lot of variant to them. I've seen some with fog lights in the front. I've seen one with a spare tire in the front. I made a video on a Domingo Aladdin. That one had a canopy, the same size vehicle. Just imagine with a canopy and a pop top. That was one of the coolest cars I've ever seen in my life. This one is full-time four-wheel drive. Now let's get into the interior. And here you have three rows of seating. You have seat belts for all passengers. So one, two, three, four four five you also have ac vents up there and something even cooler if you push this seat forward this completely turns into a bed so to do that you just have to push this forward put that button in and then this seat will slide forward like that lock into place you grab this guy put it all the way down and then you do the same thing with this seat and just like that once i remove the headrest this will turn into i think a pretty comfortable bed let me see if i can lay down completely flat oh yeah more than enough room look at this I have all this room and my legs are all the way stretched out. And then to put it back, you just have to repeat the same steps. Lock that into place. That goes like that. And let's check this out space-wise. So over here, I would say your standard K-Van size. Obviously a lot of headroom. And then this seat has even more room because you're able to kind of sit like this and fully manspread. Let's check out the seats back here because I've never sat in the back of a Domingo. I am 5'9". My knees are touching. This is not very comfortable. If I sit like this, this is fine, but I don't think three people can sit back here. Unless this seat is slightly forward. Let me see. Does it lock into place? Oh, if it locks like that. Okay, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. My knees aren't touching. Again, not the most comfortable, but seeing how this is basically a K-Van, the fact that I could even have four, what is that, six people in here, that's pretty impressive because I could definitely fit someone here. Someone could obviously fit right here, or at least adult-wise, but I don't know about three adults back here. That's kind of pushing it. Let's pop the hood and see all 1,200 cc's. This is very similar to a sandbar. You just have to flip that over. It actually has a little grab handle. You lift that up. 
and then it completely comes down. So this is a three cylinder, although the Clover 4, which is a 660cc, is a four cylinder, for some reason, this is a three cylinder double size motor. In my opinion, it doesn't look as easy to work on as a sandbar. On the sandbars, you kind of have the spark plugs right here. You have everything in front of your face. I think you have to take this off to kind of access most of those things that are pretty easy to change. You do have your oil dipstick right here. You have your coolant right there, muffler but here's how the back of a Domingo looks like. The engine is still like this. I would say that's pretty much it exterior and interior wise. Now let's start the Domingo. See how it sounds, see how it runs. How does it sound back here? Scott, if you're watching this, you gotta add a muffler right here, man. If I buy a Domingo, I'm gonna need you to put a nice special cave little exhaust system right here. Interior wise, it's pretty standard to your regular Subaru K truck. You have your glove box there, AC is blowing cold. You have the cool sought after Subaru cup holders. This looks pretty standard as well. You have your rear heat and rear AC. Comes with power windows just for the fronts. Those both work, but now the most important part Let's start the drive. So what I'm really looking to get out of this test drive is I want to be able to go, I would say 120 to 130 relatively comfortably. 130 is 80 miles per hour. If I'm going to call this the perfect JDM road trip little minivan, I need to be able to go 80 miles per hour comfortably. All right, let's see how this feels acceleration wise. That was good, that was good. I'm still not sure if I'm able to go 130 kilometers comfortably, but that little acceleration test, I have some faith, I have some faith. We're about to get on the highway right now, actually. So let's see. I do like the way this feels regardless. I'm gonna say that right now. It is nice just having a bigger, kind of more comfortable K-Van. I don't know if I'd really utilize the three rows of seating. I don't really have any kids, but it's nice that it's just there. Wipers work. We're on the highway. I'm, so, I'm like so happy to get on the highway right now. All right, let's see. We're in third gear, going 60 kilometers an hour. I would say that's a little above standard for your traditional van. I'll probably be in fourth right now. I'm not gonna switch just yet. I'm gonna wait till I have a bigger straightaway. All right, I think I have some room right now. Third gear at 70 kilometers an hour. That's pretty impressive. Now let's go into fourth. If I could be at, all right, this is climbing. If I could be at around 90 kilometers an hour, or I'm at 90 right now. There's no RPM gauge, so I don't know if I'm screaming or not, but it doesn't sound like it's screaming. All right, all right, all right. I need some more room. Let's move over one more time. Fourth gear, 90 kilometers an hour. Not bad. I could go into fifth if I wanted to right now. I'm in fifth and the car loves it. I can hear it. The car's 100% okay at 90 kilometers an hour, so that's good. Now let's see. Are we able to get to 120, 130 comfortably though? That's the question. We're going 100. The car still sounds very good. Mind you, that's with the AC on. Let's turn the AC off. We just got a couple horsepowers back. Still going 100. This Corolla's killing me right now. Currently on the highway, we have a hill in front of me. We're going 70 kilometers an hour in fifth gear. I'm gonna put my foot down now. Let's see if we can get to 120. I still haven't got to 120. I wanna see how the car feels. Going 100, that's 62 miles per hour. Now we're going 70, that's 110. We're on a flat surface. Going 120. Still going 120. I don't know if the car loves it. I don't think the car loves it. I'm, my foot's all the way down right now. And it's kind of struggling to get to 130. Granted, 80 miles per hour is fast. In a car this size, that is fast. But yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely not it. It's not the perfect JDM road trip bus. If you want to go 75 miles per hour, which is probably the speed limit anyway, it felt good at 120. 130 is pushing. That's, that's pushing it for this car. 
But going a traditional 60 miles per hour, which I'm currently in right now, going 100 kilometers an hour, even turning at 100 kilometers an hour, the car feels fine. It just doesn't feel great at 130. Let me see, I'm gonna get back over there right now. I'm going downhill. 110, feels good. It feels really good at 110, which is a good speed. That's 72 miles per hour, that's not bad. Let's see. 120. We're going 120 right now. Could I stay like this for a while? I think so. Maybe I'm being too hard on the Domingo. Maybe I'm being too hard on the Domingo. I think it's not that bad. I can definitely get used to this. Going 100 kilometers an hour, cruising, got the AC on too. The car feels fine. Maybe I bit off more than I could chew, thinking that this could go 130, seeing how it stops at 140. But I just thought, you know, double the motor, maybe this is like double the horsepower. It is a lot torquey from like zero to 100 kilometers an hour, you know, zero to 60. It does feel faster, but that top end speed just still isn't there. I can still see myself buying a Domingo. Is it the perfect road trip bus? No, I think a Hiace is still better, a Delica is still better, a Mazda Bongo is still better. I just wanted something caveman size with double the power. That's really all I wanted to. I feel like a Heist is too big, a Delica is too big, a Mazda Bongo is a little smaller, but it's just not the size of a caveman where you can park wherever you want. You know, it's just cool, a little quirky. I'm sitting on top of the wheels. It just sadly, it's kind of breaking my heart. It doesn't have that. It is still really fun. I am still going 110 kilometers cruising right now but it just doesn't have that like, you know, that top speed where you want to go 80, you want to get to your destination a lot quicker. It just doesn't have that. But besides that, the car feels fine, super comfortable, a lot more comfortable than a K-Van, not to mention if I had passengers back here, probably rides even smoother. Turning radius is good, you have power steering. Mind you, the AC has been on this entire time. Right now, I'm just gunning it. Currently going 120. I don't know, man, 120 is pretty quick. It isn't like, you know, road trips to me. I wish I had a tack. If I was going 120 and I was like 3,000, 4,000 on the RPM and red lines around eight, then I would feel more comfortable. But not knowing where my red line is and kind of hearing the car scream, I feel like 120 might be pushing it. But right there, it felt good, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it felt good. I, it's better than a K-Van, let's just put it like that. If you want to go on road trips, you want to build a camper, don't get a K-Van, get a Domingo. I heard parts are very hard to find though, so take that with a grain of salt. But a Domingo is much better. Take out these seats, put a bed back there. Having this additional power makes a big difference. It's not a huge difference like driving a diesel, turbo, Delica, or high ace or Bongo, but it does make a big difference. Someone that's driven a lot of K-Vans, I cannot do 120 as comfortably as I'm doing in this car and any other K-Vans I've ever had. So I've been sitting in traffic for the last 30 minutes and there's a couple more things on the Domingo that I really like. One, the gear ratios are much longer. First gear is basically useless on all K cars, even this one. But second, second, I could roll in traffic and I could get all the way to like 50 kilometers an hour. Something else I really like, the engine is even quieter. We all know sandbars are known for being pretty quiet with the engine all the way in the back, but this guy's even quieter. Third, since I'm not gonna be going on a road trips every day, I know I keep talking about top speed. Right now I'm in second, I'm doing 20 kilometers. If I put my foot all the way down, It gets up there. It gets up there very quickly, which is good because the car is still really small and you want to get out of your own way. And everyone's first question when you buy one of these small cars is, can it go on the highway? What's the top speed? I'm in third gear going 60 kilometers an hour. Going to go into fourth. Fourth, I think I can go all the way to 100 with no problem, honestly. Let's see. We got a hill in front of me too. Maybe we'll do another top speed run right now. Let's see. Fourth gear. Yeah, I could easily go to 100. The car isn't even screaming yet. I could probably go a little faster. Maybe even 110. Yeah, I'm currently in fourth gear still. Yeah, I could go about 110 in fourth gear. Now to fifth with the AC on, mind you. Fifth gear at 110. That's perfect. That really is the realistic road trip speed. You're not gonna be doing 80 the whole way. You know, in New York, the speed limit is 50. In conclusion, is this the perfect JDM little minivan K truck on steroids? The answer is yes and no. Yes, I think this is a lot better than a K-Van. 
Is it better than a Delica? Is it better than a Hyace? I think that's more preference. I would take a Domingo over both of those. I don't really want to drive a huge Hyace around town. I want to get a small little quirky car like this. But when we think about reliability and maintenance, I don't think this Domingo wants to be driven at 120 kilometers per hour. I don't think that's going to be good for the engine. I don't think that's going to be good for long term. But I'm in this video here. Happy I finally got to drive a Domingo. Let me know what car you guys want me to drive next. We still have this Daihatsu Rocky. We got this Acti with a dump bed. This Nissan Largo, like hear me out. I would take this Nissan Largo over the Domingo when it comes to going on a road trip. Because I feel like this car is still pretty cool. It's still nice and quirky. It doesn't look like a USDM car. And it's not huge. The interior is nice. You get all the room. It isn't as big as a Delica. This one is lifted, so it's kind of hard to imagine one that isn't. But this is huge. As much as this would be great on going on a road trip, when I get to my destination, I don't want to have to find parking in this huge Delica. I don't want to have to find parking in a high ace. This even this Mazda Bongo. This one is really nice too. I love the fact that it has a pop top. Maybe we do a full video on this guy, but there's a lot of things we gotta do. Subscribe to the channel. Catch you guys on the next one. Road to 20K. We're almost. We're like 600 subscribers away. Let's get there before I go back to New York. Peace out. Remember the name. This is for the fame.